Welcome back to the Clara CFO Group channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about the new rules specifically for sole proprietors who are eligible for a PPP loan and how to calculate that loan based on gross income. So this is the basically the guidance we've been waiting for. Last week, I, I'm recording this on March 3rd. Last week, President Biden uh, put out an executive order basically stating that the way that sole proprietors are gonna be calculating their PPP loans is going to be changing. And we've all just been sitting around waiting for the SBA to issue guidance on exactly what that means and how we calculate it and what needs to be included, what needs to be excluded. And so here we are. We finally got guidance today. It was posted this afternoon, my time, and I've gone through it and we're going to talk through it. There are new applications. So if you have not gotten a PPP loan, we need you need to pay attention to, because there's actually applications that are different than the other loan applications. So specifically for sole proprietors using this new calculation method, you're going to be using a new application as well. <laughs> so here we are again, more, more stuff to talk about. It never ends with PPP. Uh, so if that is interesting to you, if you are curious whether or not this affects you at all, please continue watching and we're going to get through, um, we're gonna go through what the guidance says, but we're also gonna do a screen share and I've got a download for you guys um, with a calculation spreadsheet. So if you are trying to figure out your loan amount and you just wanna plug some numbers into an easy peasy spreadsheet, that's gonna be available for download in the description box below. So we'll be sure to link it there. And um, let's see, what else? Well. This is for you guys. Um, again, guidance posted March 3rd. This video is gonna be uh, available on March 4th. And yeah, let's get to it. Um, please take a minute to like this video, if you will, and also make sure you subscribe to the channel. And selfishly, uh, March 4th is my birthday, so it would be a super awesome birthday gift if you gave me a like and also a comment below. And if you subscribe to the channel, I would love it. All right, well, let's go ahead and get into the material here. All right, so you have been maybe hearing about these new rules and how things are gonna be calculated, but we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of exactly how this is done. So the big thing is that the new calculations are allowing the borrower to use gross income rather than net income. So if you remember a Schedule C filer used to have to use net income to calculate their PPP amount. So they took net income, divided it by 12, and then multiplied it times 2.5, and that was their loan amount. However, the SBA has basically said, we understand that we're seeing very many, a, a lot of the hardest hit businesses and some of the, especially minority business owners are not able to participate in the PPP because once they did that calculation, it essentially was wiping out any ability to get a loan. Either they had a negative net income number or they had very low amounts. And this is all types of business owners. We were seeing all types of business owners essentially coming up with numbers that were either either so tiny they weren't worth trying to get a loan and then trying to get it forgiven, or they just weren't eligible for the loan altogether because the calculations were lower. And so what the SBA has said is they said, hey, we recognize this is a problem. We recognize a lot of people have just opted out of the program because of this, so we're gonna change it. Um, one of the big things that I think is important to mention here is that um, they are being very selective on who can apply for this amount um, using this new calculation, and it is not retroactive. Okay, so many people have been wondering if they can go back and get more PPP money, or maybe if they, they submitted a loan and just got their disbursement, can they go back and get more money based on these this new calculation? So I'm just gonna address that right up front. No, you cannot. If you already have your loan approved by the SBA, you cannot go back and use this calculation, okay? Now, if you got a first round PPP loan and you haven't yet applied for a second round and you're going to apply for the first time or for the second round now, you can use this calculation or if this is, if this is your first time ever getting a PPP loan, you can also use this calculation. I'm gonna read the guidance specifically as it's written in the interim rule. 
SBA is implementing this change with respect to PPP loans that are approved after the effective date of this rule. A borrower whose PPP loan has already been approved as of the effective date of this rule cannot increase its PPP loan amount based on the new calculation methodology. So that's the, that's the final word, okay? Um, I know that many of you are upset. You think you could have get, gotten a larger loan. Um, I think they probably did a certain amount of calculations and determined that they weren't going to be able to support that going back and also just the administrative burden of going back and having tons of people reapply for larger loans was probably overwhelming as well. But again, they preface this whole interim rule with a couple pages of text about how they're trying to reach disadvantaged businesses that were essentially unable to participate in this program before. Um, so I do think that this calculation actually does that. I wish they had gotten it out to us sooner because now we're dealing with a really tight timeline for all those business owners who weren't able to apply before. Now we're dealing with a really tight timeline, timeline to get them into the program, okay? So if you're hearing this and you think you are eligible, you need to act quickly. The program co closes March 31st. PPP closes March 31st. We are, this again is being posted on March 4th. That's a tight timeline. And then it's going to be further tightened because many banks are going to close their applications so they can process through um, earlier. Okay. So there's not going to be a lot of banks accepting applications on March 31st. Okay. So just keep that in mind. So we addressed the really big question that most of you were having. Um, I wanna to address too that if your bank is currently in process, um, if, if this loan is currently in process at your bank, you might still be able to contact your bank and change the calculation, okay? Change your average payroll cost based on what we're gonna talk about, okay? And then use it using these calculation spreadsheets. So if it has not yet been approved by the SBA, you might still have time to go and change this amount. So please act quickly if that is the case. Because remember, once the bank approves it, it goes to the SBA for approval, and then you're gonna be, you're gonna be out of luck, okay? So if you do think you qualify for this larger amount and you think that you know you didn't apply that long ago, please um, take some action on it. So I think without going into too much more detail, let's go ahead and get into the spreadsheet because I'll be able to talk through how these calculations are being done. All right, well, here is the spreadsheet that I've created for you guys. I wanted to talk through this with you just to help explain exactly what we're looking at here and also um, kind of some of the logic behind how these calculations are being done. Um, just a quick reminder that if you are applying for this um, money and you're doing your loan application, you can either use your 2019 or your 2020 Schedule C. So I wanna start that. Um, and just mention that. Now for 2020, you may have not yet filed your Schedule C. If you have not filed it, you will be expected to put together a draft Schedule C. You can't just you know, pull together a profit and loss statement or just give the bank bank, um, bank statements. You need to actually have a Schedule C filled out even if it hasn't yet been filed with the um, IRS. So if you're trying to use 2020 numbers and you don't have a filed Schedule C, keep that in mind. That's gonna take a little more work to pull that together, okay? So for a lot of you, you might just opt to use 2019 if that is already done and you um, don't have easily the ability to pull together 2020. Also, just kind of high level, you can either use 2019 or 2020 numbers, whichever one is more beneficial to you. So keep that in mind as well, because you know maybe 2020 was a better year, and if so, you can use the higher number. If 2019 was a better year, that is fine as well, okay? So I'll start there. Um, so the way that this spreadsheet works is um, basically this is gonna match the application. And we've tried to um, put these descriptors here to match the application as best as we can. So on the application, they, it, it asks you to include your gross income, which is Schedule C, line seven. So I've just put in some example numbers here. So I put in $90,000. 
Um, and then this is labeled A. This matches up with the application. And then it says to divide that number by 12, but it needs to max out at 8333. And they came up with that 8333 number because that is 100,000 divided by 12. All right, and you can't you know, have any more than that when we're calculating essentially a compensation replacement for the small business owner, for the sole proprietor, with um, really compensation for any employee can't be higher than 100,000, and that is the same for sole proprietors as individuals. You can't have compensation over 100,000. So the way that this spreadsheet works is if your line seven was over a hundred thousand, it will still max you out at eight, three, three, three. Okay. So just put in your line seven, regardless of what number it is. If it's 50,000, you can put it in here. If it is 500,000, it will still calculate your loan amount for you. Okay. So this is the amount divided by 12 with a max of eight, three, three, three. And this is that 2.5 months, the loan amount. Now I want to mention here, if you are a, if you're in the entertainment hospitality industry and you have an NAICS code that begins with 72, remember that you can take three and a half months of, um, to, as your loan amount. Okay. So this number is actually calculating off of this number here, and this would be your loan amount down here. All right. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you're not leaving money on the table. If you qualify under that NAICS code, um, 72, uh, caveat there. Now that's how this works with no employees. So if you have no employees, it's a very simple calculation, easy peasy. All right. So I'm just going to change that back to my 90,000. And there you go. So in this case, if I had line seven of 90,000, I would have a loan amount of $18,750. And I would put these three numbers, 90,000, 7,500, and then this 18,750 all into the application. Okay. So these numbers are really meant to help you fill out the application. And then green is inputs and um, this gray just means don't touch it. <laughs> um, but also this number down here is boxed. This is what's actually going into the application. Okay, these are bold for that. All right, and I've also put a little screenshot in here. If you're looking at your schedule C, this is what that line looks like. Line seven, gross income. All right, let's go over to the schedule C uh, with employees. So this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So what they're going to do is they're going to allow you to take gross income minus your employee expenses that are on your schedule C. And then you're, so you're going to back out those employee costs to come up with essentially what's going to be your um, sole proprietor compensation, but then you can add in payroll costs for those employees. So you're kind of taking them out to sort of add them back in, but you're taking them out and then you have a max that you can get on that, um, that owner compensation, and then you can add in employee payroll costs. Okay. So I'm just going to walk through a quick example. So let's go back to that example. Let's say this was 90,000. Well, let's do it lower. Let's do 50,000 as your schedule C line seven. So let's say line 14 was $4,000. Line 19 was $1,000. And then line 26, which is your wages, I'm going to put that higher at 10,000. Okay. And these are annual because you're pulling this directly from your schedule C. So these are all annualized numbers. Let's take that. And then let's say your total less employee costs. So it's say, taking 50 minus these three things. So you're taking your 50,000 minus this employee cost, minus this employee cost, and minus this. And I put screenshots of what those things are over here. So line 14 is employee benefit programs, line 19 is pensions and profit sharing, and then line 26 is wages, less employment credits. And so then you come up with your total less employee costs, and then that number is divided by 12 to come up with the owner compensation replacement. And then we're going to say, what is the average, um, for average monthly payroll cost for employees? Okay. So that's what $15,000. So let's just do a calculation. I'm, I'm going to assume that these are all the same costs here. So we've got 1250 as our average monthly payroll costs. 
A and B and C are all being requested in the application. Um, and then you have to add a, a B and C here. And then you have to multiply times 2.5 or 3.5, remember, depending on NAICS code. So these are numbers that are going directly into your spreadsheet. And I've also hyperlinked here a YouTube video that I did about payroll costs. So if you aren't sure what should be included in payroll costs, you can uh, run through that. Make sure you're aware of everything that can be included in payroll costs, because if this number is higher, it will increase your loan amount. All right, so we don't want to miss anything there. Um, so essentially you would do this for 2019, and if you're trying to compare the two years, you would do the same thing for 2020, and then see which one is higher and use those numbers to fill out your application. Uh, let's do a real quick review of the application. All right, so I'm here in the 2483C form. Okay, so this was posted in March of 2021, 2483C, there is also a 2483SD-C, and that's for a second draw. So this is the one to use if you're a first-time applicant and you are using gross income. Now, it says this is what you need to use if you're using gross income. However, if you are using net income to apply for a second loan, you will just use the regular application for form the 2483. All right, so this is only if you're using gross income because they're specifically asking for it. So they're gonna ask, this is all the basic stuff we've covered in all the other videos about these application forms. You can check sole proprietor, independent contractor, or self-employed individual. Um, essentially, this is you know how you classify yourself. And year of establishment, you can make this NA if you don't know or if you just you know if you're operating as a self-employed individual you might not necessarily have a date that you established okay so you can leave that in a and then down here you'll put in your total gross income and this is going to be schedule c line seven okay and then you're going to tell them which year you're using and your number of employees and it's important to remember that your number of employees has to include you Okay, so do not, um, you know, this, the minimum you can put here is one. So if you have just you and one employee, this number will be two. If you have just you, this number will be one. If you have 10 employees, this number will be 11 because you need to include yourself. Then these are the numbers that we just calculated in the Excel spreadsheet. Your gross income and then divide it by 12, max it out at 8333 and then multiply it times 2.5. You would put that here now if you have employees again these are the numbers that we calculated on the spreadsheet again your schedule c minus those amounts those those employee costs divide by 12 average monthly and then add b and c and remember on the spreadsheet i have these a b c so you can have easy reference um, and so that's basically just going to help make that piece a little bit easier for you all right, and then the rest of the application is really just like the other ones that we've been covering when you're going to apply for these loans. So if you are applying for the loan, you will need to provide your Schedule C. So when you're going in, they will ask for that documentation. And if you have employees, you will also have to provide tax statements along with payroll journals and payroll documentation showing this average monthly um, payroll costs, but you will have to provide 941s for payroll if you have employees as well as any state um, unemployment insurance uh, quarterly reports. Uh, let's see. Now, if you have a second draw, if you are using this application and you're going to get a second draw, there is a separate one and it will say up here at the top, borrower application for second draw borrowers. Okay, so just make sure you're using the right one as you're going to um, prepare to go apply at your bank. Remember, you apply directly with the bank that's doing the lending, but it's helpful to have this already filled out once you sit down to do it with your bank because they're going to ask you all of these same questions. So you have all of the answers in a nice, nice little, um, you know, form already filled out and ready for ready to go. Okay, and the really the only thing that's different between this form and the second draw form is that it does ask you to provide those revenue decline numbers. So if you're um, remember to be eligible for a second draw of PPP, you need to prove a revenue loss um, in any one quarter 
between 2020 and 2019 of at least 25%. Okay, so those are the borrower application forms. We went through this spreadsheet and I think that pretty much covers it. Okay, again, make sure you get the download in the description box below. Now, one thing I wanna to mention to those of you who are still watching, and I think this is important for everybody to know, if you are a first time borrower and you have never gotten a PPP loan, but you are now going to use this gross income calculation, the SBA has said that they're still concerned that people who have higher net incomes may not need this money. And now if you have a high gross income, then they're basically saying, well, maybe you don't need the money and maybe you should, you know, elect out or self maybe not certify that you really needed the money. Because remember, that's one of the things that we have to check in these application process is that you needed the loan to be able to continue business. So what they're saying is they're basically removing a safe harbor that protected borrowers with loans under $2 million. So way back, I think in May or June, the SBA put out a safe harbor that said, anybody who has a loan under $2 million, we are basically gonna take your word for it and we're not gonna scrutinize it if you check that box to say that you, you needed the money because of economic uncertainty. So actually the check box says, current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necess necessary to support the ongoing operations of the applicant. Now, that safe harbor that I mentioned um, that covered any loan under $2 million. It was saying, hey, if you are a borrower with under $2 million and you check that box, we're gonna take your word for it. Um, we're gonna assume that you are doing it in good faith and essentially not question it. Now, borrowers over 2 million have to go through a questioning and they're essentially getting audited on those loans. However, the SBA has said, they want to add additional scrutiny for any borrower who's getting their first time PPP loan and they have a gross income of 150,000 or more. You have to put that in the application. So if it says 150,000 or more in that gross income line, you are essentially removing that safe harbor for yourself and you may have additional scrutiny by the SBA on your loan. They're going to be essentially making a selection, um, doing, a random selection of people who have that gross income over 150,000 and they will be looking into it with additional scrutiny. So that's something where you can decide whether or not you wanna open yourself up to that risk, that audit risk by the SBA. Uh, if, if you are getting your first round, and again, this is only for first round, if you're a second round because they have the gross revenue test and you have to prove a decline, they are, also extending that safe harbor to the second draw the second draw borrowers but if it's your first time loan you didn't get money the first time around and now you're saying hey yeah maybe I'll get into this PPP thing they're saying you know you might not need the money all that much so we're going to you know check to make sure that you need it now this doesn't mean that you can't get a ppp loan if you have a 150,000 or more gross income and it doesn't mean that you wouldn't pass the scrutiny of the sba it would just mean that you need to maybe prepare yourself for that make sure your documentation is order and also make sure you document why you felt like you needed the ppp loan at the time and you know document the economic uncertainty document any type of you know current conditions that might have made you think that you need this ppp loan okay now the other option would be to if you are falling into that bucket of a gross income over 150,000 you might determine if it makes sense for you to get to get a loan using your net income instead, because you can still get a PPP loan and use your net income using the original calculations, and then you have no scrutiny on your loan whatsoever when it comes to that checkbox of economic uncertainty, okay? So that's like a weird little rule that I just thought I'd, I'd tell you guys about, because I know there's gonna be some of you that are high individual earners and you know they're really gonna be looking at those people and saying, mm, did you really need a PPP loan? <laughs> so that I just thought I would bring that up. You can decide how you wanna deal with that. 
All right, well, I think I covered it all. Are really the key points that I wanted you guys to, um, that I really wanted to bring up as I read through the guidance, you know, I mean, this interim rule is 32 pages of guidance. And I was just trying to pull out the key things that I thought affected most of you that are watching this and the ones who've really been waiting for this guidance to come out. So I pulled out that information. I hope that's super helpful to you. Please be sure to like this video if it was and share this video with anybody that you know that's a Schedule C filer, especially if they haven't yet gotten a PPP loan. All right, I would really appreciate it. So thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate you guys and thank you for continuing to tune in. It means a lot to me. All right, thanks, bye.